Hey YouTube, I have some, some fantastic news for you. Uh, I ordered a set of one ton actors. I'm, I'm about as excited as a, uh, a young school child on a Christmas morning, you know, anxiously awaiting to run down and, and open up your Christmas gifts under the Christmas tree. We are now home and uh from from the fedex place went and picked up my new axles guys i don't know how to describe to you the magnitude or the size of these beefy things um i went ahead and go ahead and started taking the box apart i think the best way to get this out of the truck is probably going to be with my engine hoist i opened up the the cardboard box on this side uh this is obviously the front and then i've got the rear still in the box that i can take out but this is the way it it comes shipped um, it's got a wooden kind of pallet underneath it to support it and then it's got uh, the cardboard around it just to keep the the weather and elements off guys uh, oh my goodness i'm so excited it's got the eight on six and a half uh, bolt pattern it's got obviously the lock-in hubs from worn so i can now unlock this guy going on the highway and none of my front end will be moving which is awesome uh, a lot less wear and tear on the drivetrain plus if you break a shaft i can just unlock it on the trail and drive on out um, i haven't taken the rest all this stuff off yet but it has the f i believe this is f550 knuckles um, the the chromoly uh, i think this is a spicer uh, i believe it's a 1350 uh, u-joints in here uh, but i have to go back and check the specs for that to make sure uh, this has been powder coated in their their uh, curry gray with the red diff cover it's got 538 gears uh, in the the pumpkin here uh, with an arb air locker um, the trademark skid plate here this thing's really nice it even has a lip that comes up here and extends beyond the the, the, the casting to help protect the the drive shaft and then this guy can be bolted and unbolted off and it travels the whole length of this uh this diff here can be unbolted and a new one put on and it's ar 400 steel so it's supposed to be really really strong um anyway Man, this thing is great. Let's go ahead and get this guy out of the truck and we'll take a better look at it. I know you don't know the size of my hand, but you can see that uh, my hand barely covers maybe half of this differential cover. Um, the axle tube is just enormous. Um, anyway, I'll get into this and do a more in-depth review and kind of talk through all the piece parts of this particular axle housing. And this is the, the uh, Rock Jock 70. Um, so, as far as Curry is concerned, this is the strongest axle that they make. And um, they use this in trophy trucks for King of the Hammers. Um, all of the Genrite rigs and multiple uh, race buggies with 800 plus horsepower and you know 40 plus inch tires that are sticky running you know, high speed through the desert and this axle holds up. I really don't think I'm gonna break this thing. Once I get them both out, out of the crates and in the garage, cool down a little bit and eat some lunch uh i'll get back with you and we'll start doing the install on these let me let me talk real briefly about uh both axles that i ordered what the specs on them are uh why did i choose curry over let's say dynatrack or uh the mopar ultimate dana 60s right all three of those axle sets are are good axles and and i i did seriously look at all three brands so what drove me to the curry brand a little bit of history and if you go look at some of my youtube videos in this channel you will see that i used to have an 07 green four-door jk that i did a one ton axle swap on uh, as well when i did that one i did actually use the dynatrack axles at that point in time when i did that um, the full float rears weren't as prominent as they are now um, and in fact at the time curry did not have a full float rear axle so i went with Dynatrack, and I did actually get a flanged rear end semi float rear. It wasn't a full float, um, so it didn't, right? It, you know, but it, it was good. I didn't have any issues with it. I was only running 37 inch tires, uh, and it performed really, really well. I didn't have any real serious problems. Had a couple of small things here and there. Um, this time I, I looked at what was offered. Uh, like I said, those three Dynatrack Pro Rocks, uh, by, uh, sorry, Dynatrack Pro Rocks the Curry Rock Jocks and the Mopar Ultimate Dana 60s. Um, 
And out of those three, the cheapest of the three options is the Mopar, right? The Ultimate Dana 60s, I think you can get a front and rear set. They're around $10,000, $11,000. Um, that set, from what I can gather, there's a lot of issues with the front end of them. If you use a ram, it's going to break the brackets off. So you've got to do some fab work to truss that up and make sure that it's, it's stout and strong. Um, so that kind of turned me off on those. So those are discounted uh, for me because I am using a ram and I, I do plan on using these axles pretty heavily. So I wanted a strong, good axle set that I didn't have to go fab on. I don't have a welder. I don't. I don't want. I don't. I want to buy a set of axles, bolt them in, and go because I can do that. Um, okay, so that left the Dynatrax and the Curry Rock Jocks. I chose the Curry Rock Jocks, obviously, um, for a couple of key features. Let me, let me point those out to you real quick. And this was for me, personal preference. Nothing wrong with the Dynatrack axles, or even the Mopars for that matter. They're, they're all good axles, but, uh, you know, for the feature set that you get with these Curry Rock Jocks at the price point, in my opinion, obviously, I chose it, but I don't think you can beat the features that you get with these. Um, so let me point some of those out real quick. First, one of the things I really, really like is this rock slider here on the bottom, right? Let's see if we can get down here and let you see this. So at the bottom of this housing, there's this AR400 steel rock slider. It has bolts on the front and the back that you can take this off if it gets scarred up real bad, okay, and replace it with a new one. That's one feature that I really like. The second feature that I like is obviously it's a high pinion. It's a high pinion front, and I got a high pinion rear sitting over there. Um, there's a lot of debate about high pinion in the rear, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, <laughs> if I was hauling a heavy, heavy trailer, I probably wouldn't do a high pinion rear. However, for this application in rock crawling, and given the fact that this housing is specifically designed for a high pinion, it's used in rock bouncers and in rock racing rally trucks for king of the hammers okay if it can take 800 horsepower and 40 plus inch tires i'm not worried about it breaking really guys i'm not and what do i get out of that i get a high pinion rear so my drive shaft isn't at a steep angle okay that gets rid of vibrations it gets the drive shaft up and out of the rocks i've broke two drive shafts on this jeep one at windrock and one at, at adventure off-road park I don't want my drive shafts getting busted up in the rocks, getting mangled. I've got a drive shaft sitting over here in the corner of my garage that got in a rock and it, it, it was twisting it, right? It just tore it up, mangled it. So my drive shaft will be up and out of the way of the rocks. That's excellent in my opinion. So, right, one of the things they also did on the high pinion, and this is true in the front VXR60 front and the 70 rear, is they have load bolt, load, <laughs> load bolts. Whew, can't talk, load bolts. So what is the load bolt? So on the ring gear, let me see if I can maybe show you where it is on here. So the ring gear sits inside this, uh, let me make sure I'm pointing it. So the ring gear sits inside this and rotates, right? Well, there's a load bolt that goes up and it's, I forget the tolerance, but it's really tight tolerance and it sits up right next to the edge of the face of that ring gear. And so as it's rotating, if there's a lot of, of force or mo push, pushing on that ring gear and it tries to deflect, this bolt rests up against that and keeps the ring gear from deflecting and messing up the mesh pattern between the pinion and the ring gear where they're rotating in there, right? So it keeps a good solid mesh. You don't get deflection. Deflection obviously is where you get teeth that can chip or break. That's where you explode the ring gears. The one last feature, this diff cover here is rotated, right? So if this pinion, I can't move this one, it's heavy. <laughs> But if the pinion is pointed up, this diff cover, it's not pointed, it's not flat like this. It's actually angled up so that these bolts down here on the diff cover itself aren't perpendicular pointed straight out to the rocks. So it'll hit on this slider, but it won't mangle up any of my bolt heads on my diff cover. I think that's really, really nice, right? You also get a whole lot of options. Like I can move this um, shock mount up and down. I've got two bolt holes here that I can use for um, selecting where my, my sway bar connects. I've got multiple holes for my control arms on both the upper and lower down here. Um, same thing for the track bar, right? I get to select where how high that is so that I can get that parallel depending on the configuration for my particular Jeep. Um, you know, what lift kit I'm running, 
uh, what my pinion angle is going to be set at, right? All those things uh, are taken into account. So last thing to tell you before we start doing the install is kind of some features specific to these two that I ordered. Um, I did use the two-click ship kind of thing, and if you go look on their website, you'll know what I'm talking about. You can do complete custom axles where, um, right, you, you select every single thing that you want on there, and you can pick like RCVs in the front or whatever. Um, what I did was I got the rear with 538 gears, ARB lockers, uh, 40 spline shafts, and then on the front axle, it's a, again, 538 gears, ARBs, and those are 35 spline instead of the 40 spline and it has the uh, worn lockout hubs. So with that, let's get it installed. The rear axle is essentially in. I've hand tightened the bolts at this point. Uh, I didn't get a lot of footage of the, the actual install, but, but to be quite honest with you guys, the, the process of installing it would probably be kind of boring to watch, but I'll give you the highlights here and show you what, we, what I did. The process of getting this in actually wasn't that hard, really. Right, if you recall, I had this on some wooden dollies and I just pushed it up under the Jeep. And then I used this hand jack here uh, and I put it under the center of the diff and jacked the thing up, got it on a set of jack stands and then inched it up left, right, left, right, left, right, got it up to where I needed it to be. And then I used the floor jack on the center of the diff towards the front on the skid plate. I jacked it up to, to push the pinion up, which would align my holes for my control arms. And so the first thing I did was I just got the lower control arms in on both sides and I left them exactly how I had it for my Dana 44s. So it'll probably need to be tweaked out. But for now, my goal is to just to get this off jack stands back on a set of wheels so that I can cycle it and measure for drive shafts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, leave the shocks and the sway bars off first and the brake lines. And then what I did was I jacked one side of the axle up and dropped the other side, took that jack stand out and dropped it all the way to the floor. And then it was real easy to just slide the spring in, right? I don't have a spring compressor, didn't need one. It just drop it all the way to the floor, slide it up where it needs to be, jack the jack up, it holds it in place, put a jack stand back up under there and you're good to go. Um, that's essentially all there is to it for the rear. Um, the e-brakes, they just, they go right in like they would on a stock one. The tone, uh, ABS sensors, there's a magnet on one side. The magnet has to face the tone ring that's attached to the axle shaft. And so when you put this in, the magnet has to face into the axle, uh, if that makes sense. So you, it'll go both ways because it's drilled and tapped on the side here um, for it to go in either direction. So just make sure when you put that in, you put it the right way. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward it's just bolting everything back up just like the other axle was hey good morning so uh the first day i managed to get my axles get them home get them uh, at least get the rear installed in the jeep here uh installed is probably a relative term i've got them hand all the bolts hand tight um brake lines are all connected up control arms are connected um the, the only things left to do on the rear obviously is to to make sure that i've got the drive shaft angle uh, to the rear axle uh, the pinion pointing in the right way and get the uh, the e-brakes connected one thing i learned and i'll share this with you guys is the e-brake cables when you go from a stock jk width axle to a 70 inch wide axle that's a four inch gain in total width so two inches on each side the brake lines or the brake cables um, they'll reach but not if you connect them into the little hole, uh, holders on the axle tube itself. There's like a little uh, clips that, that hold the cable. If you put it in that, it's, it's super, super tight. So um, Clayton, or not Clayton, uh, Curry sells a $14 bracket that extends by one inch on each side. It's just a piece of metal with a hole on each end. Um, so if you get these axles, I would go ahead and get the $14 little extension piece to hold your uh, e-brake cable you will need it um, okay so as you can see the rear is in right as i said i've still got a couple of small things to button up i've got the tires mounted on here man it looks good i've got a lot of room right now in the back but i think that that's a lot because the springs haven't settled back down and i've still got the front completely on jacks 
uh, and it's leaning forward. You may not be able to tell in the video, but a lot of the weight of the Jeep is to the front right now. So I think when I, when I get the front done, it'll settle out a little bit, I hope. If not, maybe this is a good opportunity to go to a set of 42s or 43s. Uh, uh, my wife didn't hear that when you watch this video, honey. I'm not doing that. Okay, um, so what I've done so far, uh, obviously got a cup of coffee. Uh, that's very important. <laughs> uh, then I've got the, uh, the front axle here. You can see I, I used the same trick. I got dollies. I rolled them up under the Jeep, used the jack stand here. And uh, with the jack stand, I, I literally just did the whole, you know, inch it back and forth, put stands, excuse me, stands on either side to hold it up. Um, I went ahead and connected in the track bar, got the lower control arms bolted on. Those are pretty simple. Uh, I started doing the uppers. You can see I've got one of the uppers on. Uh, one of the things that's, that's unique about these Curry axles is most axle manufacturers for the upper control arms just use like a rubber bushing or, you know, a polyurethane bushing or something like that where the control arm mounts to the, to the bracket. Let me show you what I'm talking about right here. Um, on the the uh, curry axles it actually has a johnny joint that's rebuildable in here so it has a lot more uh, flex and articulation with it well one of the things that you get with that is a bolt that's custom that's i guess it's got a hole all the way through the center and it's got a grease dirt in the center of it and then there's there's holes let me pull this hang on one second let me pull this out and i will show you what i'm talking about all right so the bolt has a hole in the middle, and so when you put grease in it, grease comes out of this, and it greases this Johnny joint. So, one of the things I ran into, and it's uh, this morning I just took off to the hardware store and had to buy a new uh, drill bit. Uh, I broke my other one doing this side over here. But basically, what I'm having to do, and this may be completely unique to me. Um, others may not have to do this. I guess it depends on what control arms you use. <coughs> Let me show you. But for me... This is a Clayton uh, upper control arm, and the holes here, right, these holes aren't quite big enough, so I'm having to step them up to half an inch to fit that custom bolt through there. So um, that's really the only kind of thing I've run into up to this point other than the e-brake lines. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and get this front bolted in. I'm going to start, get this other upper control arm in. Once I get it in, then I'm going to get the springs. <clears throat> Oh, get the springs and the uh, uh, what do you call them the bump stops put in and then we're done oh one more thing on the bump stops so I have some metal cloak bump stops right this is basically like little hockey pucks um, with a bolt through it when you put these on a standard Dana 44 axle you have to kind of hold your hand really really uncomfortably up underneath this spring perch and get a tool in there to hold this nut on this curries I don't know if you can see it, but it's threaded. And it just so happens to be the exact same size. I don't know if this is on purpose, if they're all this way, or if it's just because it's the metal, the metal cloak happens to be the same pitch and thread or whatever, but this threads right into that. I don't need the nut anymore. So that's pretty cool, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I don't have to fool with all that. I can just stick this on here and thread the bolt on and I'm done. So I like that. That's pretty nice, pretty handy. Uh, one other thing that I have I have run into is you'll notice I do not have my speed sensor um, traction control whatever you want to call it in there yet the reason I don't is to get to it it's actually like right there it's behind this brake rotor to get to it you've got to take the brake caliper off I had an air ratchet turned on max which is like I don't know 165 foot pounds or something I don't know what it does 200 it's it it's it's more than I can generally apply with a ratchet socket in my hands I could not get that bolt off it is extremely tight so I've got to figure out how to get that off I'm going to get a big breaker bar or something but I've got to get these calipers off to be able to get down to the to the location where the the uh where I can bolt that in the other thing is you'll notice <clears throat> curry also gives you this this little holder here that's kind of handy, and that's for the, the cable, so it, it keeps the cable nice and tight and out of the way. All right, today has been full of adventures. Uh, a couple of trips to the hardware store, <laughs> and uh, the wife and I have spent uh, on and off some, all, most of the day on this front end. Um, I had to make some modifications to the control arms. I had to drill the holes out. I believe I showed you guys that just a little bit ago. Um, so let me show you the next little fun adventure that we've been having. Um, I went to try to take the brake caliper 
off of the rotor and the it, right it sits right up in here and it bolts into these holes um, with these bolts and I think there was about five pounds of red Loctite on it my um, air ratchet wouldn't even touch it so I had to go to the hardware store and I bought a 24 inch breaker bar um, so 24 inch breaker bar my body weight plus anything I have strength wise was what it took to break those bolts loose I get them off why I do all this, you ask? Um, it was so that I could get the speed sensor. You can see right down in here, right? I had to get this speed sensor down in here, and you can't reach that with the brakes, right? The brakes sit right in here, the brake rotor. So got all that off. I got down in here, and I put this in, and you'll notice the wire, actually, the way this bolts in, the wire goes out towards um, the hub. Well, that's bad because it rubs the, the brake rotor when I put it on. So I went online, asked a few people, uh, reached out to a couple off-road clubs, one in Chattanooga, um, who does a lot of lifts, and I know for a fact that uh, that gentleman has, has done the Curry Rock Jocks. I'll put a link to his, his website and his, his shop in the, the video. But right, he said he ran into this. What he did was he drilled and tapped a hole here and then put a clamp to hold this down. Another gentleman said he just used RTV. I don't really have an ability to drill and tap this right now and put a clamp in it real easy. Um, so I'm trying the RTV thing. I zip tied the cable down and then RTV'd it to give the RTV time to set up. Um, so now I'm just in a wait pattern. And once that finishes, then I can cut these zip ties off and then hopefully that holds this, this cable down and out of the way of the brake rotor. Not what I would call an ideal situation, but uh, it should work. Um, so once we get past that hurdle, everything else, as you can see, is bolted in and uh, looking great. I really like the way this curry axle is built. I like having these uh, Johnny joints in the upper control arms and the canted diff. Um, and I'll show you, if you come around here and look at the way the steering is set up, the VXR series came with the mount for the ram, which is fantastic. Every axle I've ever done, I've had to go have somebody weld me on some tabs. So that's awesome. Um, it also came with the tie rod and this clamp this is a lot looks like it could be a lot stronger than the clamp that i did have i had just a regular round clamp that would go on and it had the bolt that that, that come down through the top and cinched onto it and then just had little allen heads that went through the aluminum it didn't hold at all i mean it would spin on me constantly i'd have to stop on the trail couldn't turn one direction and tighten it down this one it looks like it's got a lot of bite to it so i'm hoping that one works better if not i'll probably end up welding some tabs onto this tie rod and those won't go anywhere Anyway, that's done. Uh, I still have to put the drag link in from the pitman arm down, but that's that shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, my next step at this point, uh, I'm gonna be trying to get the tires on the Jeep all the way around, take some measurements for the drive shafts, and then it'll just be a weight gain for the drive shafts. Uh, I also still have to put in the ARB air compressor into the Jeep to run the lockers. I've got to plumb those out to the front and rear end get the s-pod installed i don't know if i told you guys i'm doing that but i've got an s-pod here uh, it's a pretty simple straightforward install i got it ordered it's just sitting here i haven't actually installed it yet um, just because i didn't feel like climbing in the jeep with it on four jack stands so once i get the tires on there i'll climb in and we'll get that that bolted in and then i'll have the ability to turn on the compressor activate my lockers and uh Get this bad boy back on the trails. All right, we have finished up the axle install and the Jeep has officially rolled out of the garage. Yeah, I literally backed up, that's it. Um, show you guys the finished product. This is the Rock Jock 60 VXR front axle. Eight inch PSC Ram. This is the Curry heavy duty drag link and tie rod installed sitting on a set of uh cooper set pro 40s the 60 vxr holds three quarts of oil it does not come with oil you need to put that in uh, during the installation i love this wide stance i don't know if this comes out on the video but man it looks good it'll be really stable it's got the lockout hubs now, so I can disconnect my front end going down the road. Or if I break on the trail, I can easily unlock my hubs. 
I already had the uh, long arms here from Clayton, everything bolted in just fine. Curry's axles were literally a direct bolt in. The only real issues I ran into were with the drive shafts and it wasn't due to the person making the drive shaft, it was just due to um, piece parts from, from vendors. The front output yoke, if you go to a 1350, let me just tell you guys, you can't use a regular output yoke. It has to have, if you can see this, it has to have uh, like a fluted end on it so that it gets it out and away from the shift lever for, for, for the uh, transfer case. Many people ask, why high pinion rear? My drive shaft is completely protected by the gas tank skid and it is up and out of the way. Nothing can hit that easily. Uh, I did have to, I don't know if I had to, but I went ahead and moved the EVAP canister. I did the cheap home brew version. I literally just drilled another hole in the side of that little skid plate and uh, just threaded the bolt in, left one bolt out, and I scooted it over about uh, two inches probably. And I got that guy installed. I just wanted to get the extra clearance for the drive shaft just in case. This is sitting on a four inch lift with 40s, like I said. Um, I think it looks great. Eventually it may end up on 42s. The rear end, it's a uh, 70 rear full float with 40 spline shafts. Um, it's just huge, guys. I don't know any other way to tell you the size of this thing, but it is big, really, really big. One other key item of note here, let me see if I can get around here to the front and show you. When you go to install the e-brakes, order the, uh, from Curry, order the uh, extensions. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little extension right there bolted on to the, uh, the e-brake cable. Because these are 70 inch wide WMS, the e-brakes aren't set up for that from the factory. The factory axles are much, much smaller. So make sure you get the extensions when you when you take order this order these axles from those guys man i'm really impressed can't wait to take it for a real drive i think i may have broke my finger uh so i'm gonna have to go mend that a little bit it's turning purple and swollen on me so i'll do that and then we'll take this thing for a drive i still need to grease the zerts on the front steering uh but i've done the the homebrew alignment and uh it looks great oh i'll show you this my nephew made me uh this for my birthday printed it on a 3d printer i still need to paint it but i thought that was kind of cool so thank you for that david <laughs> um with that guys i guess we're finished that ends the install of the curry rock jock axles um the only other thing i really did during this install i didn't video it here and it's really just because i've seen hundreds of other people video that and i don't really think there's a need in it but if you have any interest in learning how to do the S-Pod install, I did install the S-Pod in here with an ARB compressor mounted up underneath to be able to actuate the air lockers. Um, if you guys want me to do a video, I can kind of talk you through it and show you what I did. It's, it's a really, really simple install. You just pull off some plastic, you, you bolt the little you know bracketry up to the fisherman's hook, whatever it's called in the center there fish one wire through and that's really it and you just bolt the bracket down with two bolts you're done um, your s pod is installed so it's really 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 simple but if you guys want a more detailed video and i can show you how i did that let me know in the comments below and i will uh i'll take care of that for you i'm interested to know what you guys think if you have any questions i know when i was looking up doing this install uh i couldn't find a lot of videos where people had done the the new series the new vxr series front axle or the 70 rear i found one video with the 70 rear and it was like i don't know a minute and a half long very very short so i couldn't really see a lot of it if there's anything specifically you guys want to see on this axles if you're considering buying them i ran like i said earlier in this video i've run dynatrax i've obviously run the stock ones <coughs> excuse me and now i've got the curries so i've got kind of an experience of both sides of that and I've got a friend in the club that, that has a set of the Mopars. Um, so I, I can give you my opinions on them. I think any of those axle companies would, would be fine. Um, but for many reasons, as I listed at the beginning of this video, I believe the Curries are the best fit for my kind of wheeling. Um, so with that, see you guys later. Please like and subscribe. And let me know if you got anything else you want to see. Thanks very much.